Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe, and today we will be talking about one of my favorite packages for React Redux, and that is Redux Toolkit. We will be covering what Redux Toolkit is, and we will be coding a simple application in Redux Toolkit. The Toolkit is an incredible package. It's a very underrated one in my opinion, and it aims to make some of the most painful parts of Redux a lot easier while keeping the best parts of Redux. This package addresses the following problems of Redux, which is too much boilerplate code, too many things to install, too complex for configuring the Redux store. So basically Redux just has too much stuff when you're trying to set it up and when you want to code, it just gets in the way. The great thing about Toolkit is that this is still Redux. You don't need to learn anything new. You can still use the same packages and not have to learn anything about new state management libraries. You can use the same principles, the same architecture, and it's even built by the people who made Redux. So if you know Redux, it's very easy to migrate to Redux Toolkit. If you don't know Redux, it makes it way easier to learn. Just a bunch of pure upside. Redux Toolkit addresses a lot of the problems that Redux generally has, so you can say goodbye to all that annoying Redux boilerplate. Having said that, let's take a look at Redux Toolkit code by building a simple application. So I'm here in a code editor, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Create React App. And we're going to call it Toolkit App. All right, once that's finished, we're going to go into the folder we have created open that up and then we are now going to install Redux Toolkit which we're going to do with npm i at Redux JS slash toolkit react Redux so you need both these packages to install okay once that's installed we're going to go to our source folder and we're going to delete a bunch of files that we don't need from create React app. So we're going to delete app test JS. We're going to delete logo. We're going to delete report web vitals and we're going to delete setup tests. So we're going to delete all those. And from here, we're going to go to our index JS and we're going to remove the report web vitals and the import for that. And we are now going to configure our Redux store. And to do that, we're going to first import provider from react redux which is normal for redux anyways then we're going to import configure store but this is going to come from at redux js toolkit so it's going to come from our toolkit package this time and then we're going to create our store using configure store and we are going to set reducer to an empty object we will fill this out later when we create a reducer and we are going to select the strict mode with command D if you're using Visual Studio Code and we're going to replace it with provider and we're going to include Let's deselect the bottom one and we're going to include store equals store like this so that this will configure all our toolkit stuff into our provider. And this is basically the setup that you would normally have to do for toolkit, whereas normal Redux would require you to do a lot more. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file and we're going to call it counter state. JS. So basically the app we're trying to build is going to be a very simple one. It's going to have a count. We're going to be able to increment and decrement this count by pressing a button. So it's very simple, but it gets the point across of toolkit and what it is. So in this file, this is where we're going to be writing our Redux toolkit code. So instead of having all those actions and reducers, if you're familiar with Redux, we just need one file that's going to have all of that logic included. So the first thing we're going to do 
is import create slice. And we're going to grab it from, oops, grab it from Redux toolkit, like so. And we're going to create a variable called counter slice. And we're going to use a create slice function that we imported. And then we're going to call this counter. And we are going to set the initial state to count to zero. So this is basically the state that's going to be saved. And we're going to use this value to increment, decrement, and display the value. So the next thing we're going to set up is reducers. So this is where you're going to have your cases, so to speak, in normal Redux. If you don't know what cases are, basically they are the logic for the functions that you create. Actions and reducers, generally you can think of them as like functions, except now these functions are within Redux ecosystem. So they allow you to modify the state that is tied to Redux. So the first thing we're going to create with this is going to be increment. So it's going to take in the state argument, and we're going to use the state dot count to increment by one. So basically, what this allows us to do is grab the state, which is which only consists of count for the time being, and we can increment that by one. Now, if you look at Redux, you're going to be a little confused that we're just directly modifying state. However, this is okay for toolkit because they already have Imer, a package that allows you to modify state directly in your code, but the package actually just replaces it. It takes that into account, makes sure it doesn't replace the code. So you can write it as if you're modifying the real state, but underneath behind the scene, you're not actually modifying it, you're replacing the state like you normally should. So this is a very convenient feature. You can write it as you normally would, but we're going to stick with the Imer way. So we're also going to create a decrement case like so, and basically repeat the code that we've written, except we're going to subtract the count. So fairly standard. So this is kind of like a reducer. However, this is where the next line is going to be where the beauty of toolkit comes from. So instead of having a separate action file, we are going to just destructure and we are going to take counter slice and grab the actions property from it. This by itself creates the action logic you normally would in normal Redux. So when you normally have to write export const increment like so, and you write type increment, and then, and then you would have maybe a payload of some value. So basically, this is typically what you would normally have to write for normal Redux. And this would be on a separate file. And then you would have action constants, which are just constants versions of these strings. So you don't make a mistake. You would have to put this in a separate file. So you have to create two other files for these, for every function you're trying to create. Now, it doesn't look like that much more code in particular over here. However, when you start getting to a big application, having to write all this plus this for every function you're trying to create in separate files and add to that if you're using TypeScript or a type library, you're going to end up with so much more code. And it's really, really hard to follow. And it's very unnatural when you're trying to write a function. Because when you write a function, you just want to write the logic in one location. And you just want to worry about this. So toolkit allows us to remove all that. We just have to write this guy and we just have to write this boilerplate anytime we create a new case. So it makes it so much easier to 
configure this. And a lot of the pain points of Redux can be minified. And so right here, the last thing I had to do was export our Redux uh, counter slice reducer. And with this, we can basically import, um, what was it? Counter reducer from the counter state file. And when we do that, we can set up our reducer that's set up in here, counter reducer, and set up like this. And now we have our reducer all set up. Okay, now that we set that up, we are going to go to our app.js file so we can actually create the JSX and use the logic we've created. So if you see, if you're using create react app, we have this boilerplate, we can delete everything. Um, we can also delete the logo because we have already deleted that. And we are going to do some imports. So we're going to import react from react like this. Then we're going to import use selector and use dispatch. This is all from normal React Redux. And we are going to import the increment and decrement from the files we have just created. So this will allow us to use the state um, and this will allow us to call the actions that we need. So the first thing we're going to grab our count value, our count state from Redux with use selector. So we're going to grab the state and we're going to make sure we call the counter reducer. So basically in here we identified the reducer as counter. So we are grabbing the counter value and we are grabbing the count value or the count state from the initial state of this reducer that's what's happening. And then we're also going to create a variable called dispatch and we're going to use dispatch because we will need this to call our actions. And we are going to now create a div, display the count with this div. And we are going to create basically two buttons. This first button is going to be dispatching our increment like so. And we're going to set it with increment me. We're going to create another button. We're just going to copy this and we are going to decrement. So these two, these two buttons will allow us to increment or decrement and use the actions that we have created in our counter state. And by doing so, we can run our application. Give it a moment. And as you can see, the styling is all not there, but this is the functionality behind it. So anytime we hit the increment, we're going to increment this count, we're going to decrement. Basically, I spelled that wrong. So basically, Basically, with Redux Toolkit, it gives you the option of all the benefits of Redux with very simple boilerplate code. This is everything you need. You only need to write the reducers. You don't have to worry about the extraneous action um, action logic that you normally have to, would have to deal with. This is just all here, all simple, and so much easier to set up. As you can see, Redux Toolkit is incredibly useful and making writing Redux way more manageable. You don't need a new fancy state management library. You can stick to the main basics of Redux that most people know without all the crazy boilerplate and setup that people usually have issues with. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Give this video a like. Comment below if you have any questions or suggestions on what type of content you guys want. And don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot when you guys do. Thanks and see you next time.